Tonight, can a woman become a man or vice versa? That appears to be the dominant political question of the day. Those arguing for so-called gender ideology, which questions the idea of two biological sexes and believes there could be in excess of 100 genders, appear to be winning the argument in the media, within corporations and our public institutions and in higher education. So is this idea of becoming any gender here to stay? With unisex changing rooms, biological men in women's sport, and being ordered to give your pronouns in meetings, has this woke ideology already won? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome author and leading feminist, Kara Dansky. Hi, Kara. Hi. Great to have you on the show. Now, I understand you're at a demonstration at the moment. Where are you and what are you demonstrating about? Yes, thanks so much for having me. Uh, we are live in uh, at a courthouse in a small town called Athens, Ohio. Uh, and I apologize, I'm a bit weather blown. Uh, it's very windy here uh, and it's raining a bit. It just started coming down. Uh, so there's a situation here in this town, uh, which happens to be my hometown, there's a store which is owned by a woman. It's a woman-owned small business. And the owner's name is Amy. And she has posted the declaration on women's sex-based rights in the, in the front of her store, along with some other signs that say things like, women don't have penises and uh, no men in women's prisons and things like that. And she's getting a lot of harassment. And so we came today because there are people at her store right now protesting her and calling for a boycott of her store. So we decided rather than engage with that, we would come to the courthouse and we would just do our own women's rights demonstration. So we are here today to stand up for women's sex-based rights. Uh, do you think that this battle can be won? Well, I absolutely think that we're going to win. I think that as more and more people come to understand what's going on, um, more and more people will come around. We've gotten a lot of support here today. We've gotten a lot of people showing thumbs up. We've gotten a lot of people punching uh, their fists in the air. Uh, we ha have also gotten some of the more typical responses uh, just a few moments ago. I hope it's okay to say this. Uh, some man just had a loud temper tantrum and called us a bunch of fascist bitches. So that was interesting. Um, we have gotten a lot of middle fingers and we've just gotten a lot of profanity. But again, I want to emphasize, we've gotten a lot of support as well. And you're a leading feminist author. Do you see this as an attack on women? Yes, unquestionably. Uh, thanks for raising that. I wrote the book, The Abolition of Sex. I will have a book coming out later this year. Um, and I'm really excited about that. But this is absolutely unquestionably an attack on women. As many people saw with Kelly J. Keene in Auckland, uh, there was no question that that was a physically violent attack. Uh, we have not gotten any physical violence today. We didn't know whether we should expect it or not. Uh, that hasn't happened. Um, but this is unquestionably an attack on women. And, you know, we know that for thousands of years, women and girls were discriminated against uh, on the basis of sex. And now we're sort of expected to turn around and pretend that sex isn't real. And women are standing up and saying, no, we're, we're not backing down on this. We have our right to single sex spaces. We have our right to single sex prisons. And we have our free speech rights. And we're not going to shut up. However, given the fact that you've now got corporations insisting that staff members announce their pronouns in meetings, you've got biological men who identify as female in women's sport, not world athletics, but other sports, uh, unisex changing rooms and bathrooms are becoming the norm. So how do you turn back the clock on this? So you're absolutely right that all of those things are happening. The other thing is all of those things are deeply unpopular, at least with the American public and I assume with the public all over the world. Yeah. Ordinary, you know, radical feminists understand this issue probably better than many people, but ordinary average American voters and ordinary average uh, Americans generally um, do not like this, do not want men in women's bathrooms, do not want men in women's sports. There's been polling that's been done that shows conclusively time and again that um, Americans, including Americans who describe themselves as liberal or left, are not okay with uh, having men in women's sports or with men in women's bathrooms. So I think, you know, our Democratic Party is unquestionably pushing this. And ordinary average Americans, including many rank and file Democrats, absolutely hate it. However, Cara, People listening to this, especially if, if they're a trans woman or a trans man, they, they may be offended by you referring to them as men. Um, surely the, the, the sort of courteous 
terminology is, is to identify them as 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 trans women and trans men and, and to give them their relevant pronouns. Um, all of these policies, unisex toilets, uh, pronouns in meetings, it's there to make a group who are very vilified and prejudged against in our society feel included. You know, one of the things I said during our demonstration here is that women are female, men are male. That is true for all 8 billion people all over the world. And there's just no other coherent category of people who are somehow neither male nor female or actually the opposite sex or have somehow changed sex. There's just no credible evidence that any of that is true. So when you talk about a group that has suffered, I would just argue that women have suffered vis-a-vis -vis men as a class for thousands of years. And that's what we're here to address. Uh, what do you think is the timeline for achieving your dream of, of ending this woke madness, Cara? Because I'm very sympathetic to what you've got to say. And on this programme, I've been on record um, as, as having the view that the world's gone mad, uh, that we're ignoring basic biological facts. Uh, we're ignoring women's hard-fought sex-based rights. The world's gone mad. Um, how long is it going to take to reverse this, do you think? We'll keep going until it's done. I don't know, you know, and I, I'm, I, I'm notoriously terrible at making predictions. And so I, I'm also, I, I never make New Year's resolutions, but I made one this year and I said, I'm not making any predictions for the rest of 2023. So I'm not even yeah. willing to speculate on that, but I will say we are not going anywhere until this is won. Uh, listen, before, before you get struck by a water cannon, uh, Cara, or that could be the weather in Ohio, um, can I just ask you about the political aspect of this? Uh, has it become left versus right? Because I know lots of left-leaning socialist women, uh, they'd be called liberals in America, who are very disappointed with how the left have adopted this ideology. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. And um, most Americans have no idea that we present a leftist, feminist critique of so-called gender identity. Uh, the media constantly paints this as a as the big bad Christian right up against a small marginalized community. And most Americans never hear a feminist analysis. They never hear a leftist analysis or a materialist analysis uh, critiquing gender identity because the media won't platform it um, because they know we're right.